think, total of almost 80 events a month uh, evangelizing Microsoft products and services. You know, we don't talk about ourselves a lot here on the, on the bomb because the voice of the Microsoft partner really is about being, you know, the voice of your partner and learning from the best and brightest that are out there. Uh, but I do want to make sure I recognize some of the great individuals that we have on our team. So there you go. Uh, it's just getting bigger and bigger. It's crazy. I got first world problems, you know, these days, not necessarily like how we're going to make a dollar. It's more like how the heck are we going to service on all the, the needs that are out there. So we're just very fortunate. And I also want to say thank you to everyone uh, that is attending today, attending yesterday or attending, you know, in the future. We have two different platforms. We have one on Teams, right, that you're in here right now. And we also have uh, LinkedIn Live. And I think this session has about 500 partners that registered for it. Um, and able to, to see it. Uh, and what we probably will get uh, after we will send this back out about 600 people watching the show. So I want to say thank you everybody for, for coming to this. Um, you know, it's, uh, we, we feel very fortunate that, that you honor us with the time uh, that we can, uh, you know, help, you know, talk about really greatest things. So, um, you know, before we get, uh, let me go into the agenda. Let's get, let's get the agenda slide up here. Um, you know, for, so we'll get into introductions. We want to meet our great speakers here. Uh, next, we're going to get specifically introduction into advanced specialization, right? Uh, then we're going to get into low code uh, application development, which is awesome because we're going to get more granular. So we're going to start with the top, right? And then we're going to get more granular, uh, which a lot of the folks that are attending today would like to kind of know more about. And then we have a really more of a Q&A today. So, you know, the last, last few months we do like a partner showcase in the very beginning, that kind of thing. Today we want to just actually let it flow a little bit more and, and really focus on what you came here to learn today and maybe what you want to wait, walk away from. Now, the last thing, uh, we'll talk a little bit uh, with uh, about the Stratus Cloud Alliance and, and, you know, what they do. And, you know, we're partnered with them. We're very fortunate to have a, a great partnership uh, helping some of their uh, their partners out with, with some of their marketing and sales needs. So that's really our, our, uh, our agenda for today. Uh, why don't we go ahead and get into uh, our introductions then. Let's... We like, to, we like to go fast here. You know, we, we've got a lot, a lot to cover, so we'll do that. So let me go ahead and just, uh, why don't we start out with, we'll just go from left to right. If you wouldn't mind just uh, introducing yourself, uh, your responsibility, your program, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll move on to the next slide. Katie, would you mind? Absolutely. So hi, everyone. My name is Katie Bark. I am the Advanced Specialization Program Lead for Microsoft's Global Partner Solutions. I've been with the advanced specializations uh, from the beginning, launching the first six in 2019. So I appreciate the opportunity to speak to everyone about uh, how we're evolving that program into specializations. All right. Thank you very much, Katie. Uh, Kelly? Love it. And I have the pleasure of working with Katie. And my name is Kelly Piper. And I sit in our engineering organization at Microsoft in a group called Partner Success. I primarily focus on partner programs, uh, spanning power platform. I've been with the company for about 15 years, which is unbelievable to say, um, and have spent many of those years focused on business applications and power platform. So really excited to be talking to you today about low code. Oh, fantastic. All right. Great. And then uh, Jeffrey. Hey, thanks for thanks, Sherman, for having us on. Uh, my name is Jeffrey DeMaria. I'm with the Stratus Cloud Alliance. We're an indirect CSP provider for many Microsoft Dynamics partners trying to get into the space. Uh, we run a number of programs that help partners expand into different areas of the Microsoft Cloud. Also, um, unfortunately, Scott, uh, well, not unfortunately, but Scott, he's been leading our uh, indirect channel here for a while at the Stratus Cloud. Um, fantastic. He actually uh, is a new grandfather, so he's spending a little bit of time with family today. So if he he might be able to pop in a little bit later with the call, but very awesome, growing family here, and happy to be here. So thank you so much. Awesome, awesome. That is fantastic. Now, I want to make sure that we encourage folks to um, you know use this also as a networking platform. So please go ahead and uh, put in your who you are, what you do, and focus on. Uh, there might be somebody here that uh, has that need and may want to give you a call. You know, we want to foster partner to partner as much as we possibly can. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead. Um, we have a poll, I think. Uh, we want to go ahead and right before we get into the very first section, uh, I think the very first poll, which is, you know, maybe where are you on your journey? Can we go ahead and publish that? Have yeah, my team uh, publish this poll here. 
And uh, one thing to note, whenever we're doing polls, we don't publish who said what. So I want you to feel comfortable with that. There's no PII here. Uh, we don't publish who said what. So uh, feel free to go ahead and do it. We actually kind of just do it for edification purposes. So you know, are you currently working towards you know, um, you know, gaining advanced specializations? I think that would be a, a good one to start. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let me go ahead and get into the uh, next uh, next slide here. And you know, first, you know, Katie, you know, thank you once again for coming today. And you know, I, I think uh, you're going to give some great insight uh, for us. And, you know, advanced specializations can be, um, you know, confusing. Uh, I think you know, and, and we work with partners, you know, every day. Uh, work with partners for five years uh, at Microsoft, right? Uh, and there's a lot of programs out there. And it can be confusing and also like, you know, benefits and, and a lot of things that kind of go along with it. Um, would you mind maybe just kind of starting off with, you know, really what is, give us an introduction to what, what really is advanced specialization and why, and, and I guess maybe the subsequent question is why, why should we care? Happy to. Um... First off, I, I want to acknowledge, I believe your previous uh, meeting last month covered our evolution from the Microsoft Partner Network to the Microsoft Cloud Partner Program. Am I correct in that? Yes, 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 absolutely. Okay, excellent. Um, so I'll be talking about what is an advanced specialization and also covering how that is evolving to specialization in October as part of that larger evolution to the Microsoft Cloud Partner Program. Uh, so first off, you know, easy question, you know, what is an advanced specialization? Well, let me start with what is an advanced specialization? And do forgive me if I use these terms interchangeably while chatting, you know, it's an evolution for me as well. Um, so just like our advanced specializations are differentiators for our gold competency partners, our specializations will be differentiators for our solution partner partners. Solution partners? Solution partners, there we go. Um, like I said, the terminology is new for us as well. Um, so solution partner in the world of, of tomorrow, and I'm going to move away from the world of today, uh, that's your first opportunity to differentiate by demonstrating broad capabilities aligned to a Microsoft solution area. Once you attain that, your next step is to differentiate your uh, deep technical expertise with a specialization. A specialization further validates your experience with uh, project-based services related to very specific technical scenarios. So a few slides on, you'll see that I have um, you know, listed all of them out while our solution partner designations have nice broad titles like business applications. Oh, I didn't actually mean for you to jump ahead. <laughs> I was just teeing it up. Um, our, you will see that our specializations have much more specific titles like SAP on Azure or nice long ones like Windows Server and SQL Server migration to Microsoft Azure. So that really hints at how specific the validation is and how deep it goes. Uh, they are intended to expand you know, your customer reach uh, and drive confidence or help drive confidence uh, through this independent validation. Covered? Yeah, no, that, that's that's uh, that's excellent. Okay, um, well then, you know, how do they differ from? from I mean, I, I guess maybe you kind of s talked about that competencies. They differ from competencies a little bit. Um, what type of uh, advanced specializations exist today? I'm sorry, could you say that again? Uh, what what type of uh, advanced specializations exist today? Maybe we can go to that one slide that showed all those different. Yes, could you go back one, please? Perfect. Okay, so as I said in my introduction, you know, we we released the advanced specializations at Inspire 2019. And over the past three years, we've grown the initial six to 27, aligned to our six solution areas. So here you'll see that, you know, we have three aligned uh, solution areas for Azure, business applications, security, and modern work. And each one of those has a number of specializations built off of it. And there will be more coming as well. Um, so these are the 27. I will not uh, test my memory by trying to read them all out to you without looking at the slide. Um, but you'll notice um, as you look through this table that a couple will align to more than one solution area. And that's where you see a little bit of overlap. But for the most part, it's it's one-to-one. -one. Okay. Okay. 
And so is, this, is the natural progression? I mean, I mean, I know this is a little bit off, off script, but I think I just want to edify something here. Mm-hmm. It's the natural progression of you know partner solutions, better designation for a specialist to, to getting that special, and, and then getting the advanced specialization after that. Is that correct? But, or that, would that yes. be a pathway, I guess? Yes, you can think of it that way. Um, so today, if you're familiar with the advanced specializations, um, each one has a prerequisite that you must have a relevant aligned gold competency um, as one of the requirements for that advanced specialization. So that'll continue um, going forward as well. Starting in October, when our advanced specializations transition to specializations, the prerequisite will transition from gold competency to solution partner. So as you look at this table, the way that you want to read it is um, to earn the SAP on Azure specialization, you'll need to first earn the infrastructure uh, solution partner badge and then need additional um, skilling and performance criteria that's specifically aligned to that unique workload in order to um, earn that specialization. Some of our specializations also have additional requirements like audits or customer references or published offers in in, um, Microsoft Marketplace. And you'll need to meet all of the requirements. But yes, the journey does start with Solution Partner, uh, which is our breadth designation. And then you can go deep in areas that are relevant to your business. Okay, awesome. Now, um, so let me ask you, maybe the next question, and I'm sure a lot of, a lot of partners are asking this, but you know, why? Why would a partner want to earn an advanced specialization? And, and maybe what are the benefits that are associated with it? Excellent, yes. Uh, would you? Hop to the next slide. Actually, could you go back to the, <laughs> that's the one, thank you. Okay, so why would you wanna earn a specialization? So um, what I wanna call out today is specializations, You know, advanced specialization, that label is um, one of the things that we're really most excited about is that label is evolving to a customer facing badge starting October. So we're previewing those um, badges here. The badges are built off of your solution partner badge you know, because it is that extension. And the badges are really allowing uh, you know, that additional discoverability um, as customers can you know, immediate associate, immediately associate your organization, your capabilities with the Microsoft brand. So it's that highlighting there. Um, and you can see that they build. So as you earn more specializations, you can add them to your badge if needed. Um, so that's the first part. That visibility is, is really quite important. But we're also introducing new benefits. Uh, and I've got a preview on the next slide. Thank you. So in addition to that discoverability, that differentiation, um, you know, ability to highlight um, and connect with your customers as well as Microsoft uh, sellers because this does uh, for partners who have a specialization as well as an aligned published solution in marketplace it enables our customers to be considered for cooperative selling opportunities with Microsoft as I said we're also introducing new benefits Um, so this is really quite exciting it's incremental on top of the benefits that will be provided with your solution partner badge. And like your solution partner badge, it's specific to um, these solution areas. So the incremental benefits are intended to help accelerate your business. Uh, They include things, I'm not gonna go through the the list, but I will point you to where that list exists. Um, It includes things like Azure credits, additional product licenses, uh, additional cloud service subscriptions, Uh, for specific advanced specializations. Um, Other internal Microsoft tools and resources and programs may be available where those programs are using a specialization as a criteria for participation. So in this case, I'm talking about things like Azure Immersion Workshops, uh, the Cloud Accelerator Program, Migration and Modernization Program, where specialization partners will be able to participate there. Uh, We also have partner communities, incubation programs, and all of the information, you know, can be found in those programs, which which are leveraging the advanced specializations. So the benefits, uh, the more traditional benefits, uh, as we might think of them, the credits, the product licenses, um, the environments for dev and testing, those are going to be available starting October 3rd when you earn Solution Partner. Um, earn a specialization or already have one, 
uh, reach your solution partner anniversary date, which is the same as your competency anniversary date today, and choose your solution partner um, benefits package. Awesome, awesome. Well, a couple things we're just to touch on on here, and, and and so we, so all the partners we work with, we've been telling everybody to get get advanced specializations from the very beginning. Every every partner we work we work with and counsel and, and provide guidance to is on an advanced specialization path. Why? I'll tell you. It's called Keys to the Castle, and I love that they actually put it here in a bullet, in a way, but they didn't say Keys to the Castle. Basically, says you'll be evaluated for joint customer opportunities with Microsoft sellers. So back in July 1st of last year, um, SMC and enterprise sellers have to now partner attach every deal. That's part of their compensation. Okay, that isn't why I told everybody, but it's the truth. That's what it is. And so what they do is they're what what what, they're, the, what the account executive is doing or cloud solution architect or CS CSA cloud solution architect or ATS is doing is when they're in a situation where they have a partner or they have a deal and they need a partner where do they go? Okay, well first they, they actually go to uh, COSA. They look for your COSA offer that actually is supposed to attach to your advanced specialization, so you're there, but you're listed okay as a partner that has an advanced specialization and then they can actually attach you. Now, they're not going to get credit. Uh, here's another small, like, asterisk, okay? If they attach a partner who does not have an advanced specialization and or, and or a COSA-ready solution in the marketplace, well, they're not going to get that credit towards attaching a partner to a deal. So it's actually in a benefit. It's in a huge benefit, not just of the stuff that you get here, not just in the fact that you, you know, you're more specialized and you're going to provide a better customer experience, but you now are in a position where you can actually sell with a Microsoft sellers. Now, there are some, and, I don't, and I'm not going to put Katie on the spot, nor am I going to put Kelly on the spot, but there, yeah, there are some specializations that there's not a lot of partners in. Um, I know one that has like 16 partners that have the advanced specialization. 16 total, 16. That's it, one six. You know, you think about, holy Moses. So that should tell you about the opportunity, which is there. It's a monster opportunity. Microsoft wants you to do this. You should do this. And if you want to sell, you know, with SMC or enterprise, kind of on the piece to the castle. You've got to make sure that you do that. Um, all right. So I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to, to uh, uh, just dig a thunder there, but those are one of those. No, so I, I appreciate that. There's a lot coming for the advanced for the specializations that we're really excited about, but you did hit on one of the most exciting points is that, uh, you know, opportunity for cooperative selling. You hit it very nicely. Cooperative. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I, I, one, one other thing too, just to, um, I was talking with uh, a, a great partner, I mean, to remain nameless, because we want to be careful with this, um, and it was surprising because I asked them, they, they came to us to do an evaluation for sales and marketing, and, and I asked them, I said, what is your go-to-market, what, what is your GTM play, like how do you go, what is your customer acquisition method, is it the I'm on fire method, right, which most of us do, is it the net new customer acquisition, and they're like, no, neither one, I said, well, what is it, they said, well, it's actually our whole sales force is dedicated to working with corporate sellers at Microsoft. That's our way of doing business. And we're very well known. And we have 20, it, it actually what they asked me for was help with 35 offers in the marketplace, reconfiguring and really making them you know, all co sell ready. And they're like, we're publishing, we're publishing, we're constantly a lot, we're talking to the sellers, letting them know that we have advanced specializations. So they have actually specific campaigns. And you know, one of the things of coming to our, our our, or the voice of Microsoft partner, you always know me of trying to help you guys figure out well why, why we can do it, right? What, or what would be the what would be the reason to do it, right? Or what is the what is the light at the end of the tunnel? And that's what it is, you know. Uh, and then lastly, I think you know Microsoft also, and this is my opinion, um, is you know I, I think we all want to have better deployments. We all want to because it's it's a reputation killer. It's a black eye, right? Not just for yourself, but I think also Microsoft's point of view. I think we talked about that last month with the um, the reason why we're we're, we're you know uh, or they're getting away with silver and gold. There's just too many silver and gold that really don't know, you know, may do not have the expertise to make sure that those deployments are right. See that I could have said it then in another way that would have been a really black eye, but I didn't. I, I said it differently. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next. Uh, let's go to the next slide here. So uh, yeah, what's the next steps, Katie? Yes, uh, happy to. So I'm going to break this into two groups. Um, any partner on the call who currently has an advanced specialization and any partner on the call who is working towards one. 
Uh, so for partners who currently have an advanced specialization, great news is that will automatically transition to a specialization on October 3rd. So what you really need to focus on is ensuring that you meet the requirements for the aligned solution partner designation back to that original uh, slide with all the boxes on it. Um, as this will be required to maintain your specialization going forward. Um, otherwise, the requirements for advanced specialization do not change as they become specializations. Now, for any partner who is currently working towards uh, an advanced specialization or thinking about one, you absolutely don't need to wait until October to start taking advantage of that. If you meet the requirements today, no need to wait for a wait to apply, you know, just look at what's in Partner Center, if there's a customer reference or an audit required or not, um, you know, prepare for that and work towards that at your convenience. Uh, you know, anytime, you know, now after October, uh, no need to wait. It's whatever works for you. Uh, one thing that I will call out is that in the case of working towards a net new one, make sure you're also paying attention to the solution partner. Um, again, that'll be required starting October 3rd. So you want to make sure that you have met the requirements there and are already starting October 3rd. It will be required to maintain your specialization um, should a partner not qualify for solution partner right away or you know if they lose it at some point. Um, as specializations are built off of and differentiators for solution partner, um, you will risk losing that specialization if you don't work towards solution partner. So please do keep an eye on that. Uh, great news is one of the best ways to prepare for solution partner is to have your already highly skilled employees earn Microsoft certifications and have those certifications associated to your Microsoft Partner Center account. Um, to help you prep further, we have a number of resources available to you. A um, couple of really good ones, Cloud Weeks in particular, they're solution focused, they're five days, very intensive learning experiences to help get your highly skilled partner, uh, sorry, highly skilled employees ready to sit those exams. Uh, we also have virtual training days, uh, which are more accelerated uh, weekly offerings that are really aimed at multiple technical um, topics and geared towards more entry level skilled individuals to grow their um, expertise and get them ready for Microsoft certifications as well. Um, so I also called out a couple of resources that I think would be particularly helpful to this group, if you would. Thank you very much. Um, so sorry about the ugly links, but I wanted to make sure that anybody uh, watching this would be able to just go and type them in. Um, so we have a number of resources available to help both with questions around solution partner, advanced specializations, that's today's language, um, how things are evolving. We are communicating through the Microsoft blog. I've put a direct link in there for Cloud Weeks because those are really um, awesome resources for employees. This is really great um, for your employees who register and participate in a Cloud Week and complete all of their training. They have the ability to earn a free um, exam voucher. So a way to really help them just get over the hump. Uh, we're investing in you. We want to make sure that your skilled people are recognized and you can build up those points for your solution partner designation. And then lastly, if you do have any questions that are answered in these resources, I've put a link down there to support. Um, that's available through Partner Center, but you can type it in directly to find um, additional documents or to raise a ticket if your questions are not answered. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Katie. And yeah, many of those links actually you can just Go ahead and click through right now. Uh, we're presenting through. Yeah. Um, kind of cool, actually. Um, if you click on the one for um, evolving the Microsoft Partner Network, there are a number of resources in that uh, videos, uh, decks, PDFs, whatnot. And one thing that has come up a couple of times is where to find information on specialization. So it's all there, it's all part of the broader Microsoft Partner Network narrative. So you'll find that information in the MCPP um, walking deck where you'll also see those badge previews again. Uh, the FAQ has an entire section on specializations and timing. And the benefits guide is uh, particularly helpful as that goes into um, great detail on every line item included in the benefits package that I gave a sort of high level preview for. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, great. Thanks again. This, this was really, really fantastic. And we're going to do a little bit of a transition, but again, if you stay on with us, we got some questions uh, afterwards. Um, you know, just Jeff, Jeff, uh, Jeff, real quick, you know, you work with, you know, partners every single day, you know, especially on the low coast stuff. And we're going to get right into Kelly's presentation right now. But, you know, are you getting a lot of questions from your partners? And, and how do you handle that, you know, when, when it comes to, like, should we get an advanced specialization? Or do you get a lot of that stuff coming from your partner base? I mean, I, the, the, the bar is set pretty high, right? It, it did change a little bit. And, uh, you know, a lot of our partners are, are getting impacted on this. But, you know, what's best for the customer, right? We want to make sure our people are certified. We want to make sure that they're, they're capable of passing these exams, delivering excellent outcomes for, for, for their clients. So we're always going to encourage them to become certified on the applications that they support. You know, I do know that some of them are struggling to find necessarily the value beyond saying we have some certified people because the bar has been risen, right? So we're, we're trying to determine the best way to make sure that they can re continue to get as many benefits as they can from the program. We're, we're keeping our ear very close to the ground, offering training programs to help them get prepared to pass those exams. So there's lots of options out there, and it it's really comes down to the individual partner and how they want to take their business forward. And Jeff, I'll just add on to there are a number of resources depending on the advanced specialization that the partner is trying to get to yeah. help them get through that as well, whether it's our docs materials, our learn materials. Um, so definitely uh, stuff that is out there that will help uh, them get that as well. Yeah, it's kind of funny, right? Um, I mean, it's amazing being partners with Microsoft, right? You yeah. guys have uh, thousands, thousands of people. And the amount of content you guys put out is just phenomenal and fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my job to sift through all that stuff and pull out those golden nuggets of what's important for our partners. And, you know, yeah. we try to keep up to date. You know, we, we find doing like a monthly call with uh, – a fire hose of information, just giving them enough to sift through it because, you know, the smaller partners out there, they don't have time to do this. That's right. right? That's right. So they need that kind of narrow focus on where to actually dive into as they're going through this. Yeah. But I'll, I, I'll be honest, you guys are doing an amazing job. I yeah. love partner sites that are out there. You guys are making it very clear on how to get there. So the micro sites are really, really powerful stuff. That's so, great. The, the one thing I'll also just add on before getting into my portion of the presentation, I think what's also really important to know, and Sherman, you touched on this a little bit as well, there is a, a bit of a high bar in terms of the requirements for these specializations, and it's a high bar for a reason. Our customers are really starting to demand this, and we had a customer event last week where we had a number of um, enterprise customers, SMC customers on the call, and they are talking about the importance of the specializations of the solution designations and that being a key factor into what they're looking for when determining a partner to work with and for. So I think we're going to see more and more spotlight put on that. So the more we could do internally at Microsoft to help our partners achieve this, the better it's going to be for both the partners, Microsoft, and of course, our end customers at the end of the day. That's an excellent point. Ex excellent, excellent point. Excellent point. Um, 100%. Uh, yeah, it's funny when I was a PDM at Microsoft, um, you know, and, and it's come such a long way. And that was just, just two years ago, but yeah. our partners would come to me like, Sherman, why, why are so many broken links? You know, partner.microsoft.com. <laughs> I'm like, there's not broken links. We're here to keep you sharp. If we made some, everything so easy to find, you'd be dull. <laughs> I go, we're here. I go, we're doing you a favor. But, okay, I, I say that in jest, but, you know, something, I love what has happened in the past 24 months. It is really, there's been a lot more streamlining, a lot more like, okay, hey, this is where we go. It's very succinct, it's to the point. But I digress. Let's get into low code here. You know, Kelly, you know, thanks so much for coming here. Um, you know, let's, you know, starting it off, you know, before, um, uh, before we dive into low code, okay, because, the, so now, for everybody, we went to the top part, now we're getting into low code, okay, why you might, might want to get this, okay? He tells the market, give us the market for low code. Yeah. Uh, so 
Absolutely. This is actually one of my favorite topics. So I think the good news is the market, as we all know, for low code is growing. There's huge opportunity for partners specialized in building power apps, power, power automate, uh, PBA. Um, when we look forward, we see that the low code market is expected to reach 51 billion by 2023. So I'll say that one more time, 51 billion. This really represents the need and the growing demand for low code applications. Another really interesting uh, data point that we follow closely is what Gartner has noted. Um, and I'm sure many on the call are familiar with this uh, concept that's going on right now, but they're uh, noting that right now there is a growing demand for apps, but at the same time, we're seeing a depth shortage. So they noted that there's gonna be 500 million new apps built over the next five years. But the challenge that we're seeing is there aren't enough software developers to meet that growing demand for these apps. And they're estimating that's gonna create a 10 year dev backlog. So given all of this, when we look at low code dev platforms, they really have become necessary to allow organizations to transform everyday employees into what we call and others call citizen developer and to allow for their companies to transform their business. If I think about uh, a personal example of this, and I'm sure this is all one that you could relate to, thinking back only maybe one or two years ago, internally at Microsoft, if I needed to develop an app or a website or even automate a business process, I'd have to engage IT and our engineering group I need to wait for them to prioritize. But now with the power of Power Platform, I can use these low code applications myself to solve for all the business challenges that I'm experiencing and drive efficiencies. So huge gains overall when we're looking at the market for low code. That's fantastic. That does seem big. And we uh, do an immersion experience um, uh, class probably one week a month. So we do six of these on Power Platform. And we mm -hmm. see, uh, you know, there's probably five or six hands that are getting risen uh, every day, but it's really interesting. People are really trying to figure it out. It's, it's solving real problems. You know, that's, I, 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 um, that's right. In addition to Sherman, those immersion workshops that you mentioned internally also at Microsoft and one of the benefits with the advanced specializations um, is we also offer workshops called in a day events. And these events are partner led events really focused on teaching end customers how to use power apps power bi etc and this is a great example of an opportunity for partners who have met the requirements to be able to deliver these workshops to get in front of customers showcase their expertise but also at the end of the day help customers realize the value and the benefits of our solutions as well so just when we talk about overall benefits associated with the advanced specs and different competencies and certifications, that's definitely one that call, uh, stands out. Yeah, that's huge. So David, can you go into low code application development specialization? Tell us a little bit more about that one specifically. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So besides being a mouthful to say, um, I really think about advanced specializations as measuring a partner's in-depth capabilities in a specific solution area. So it really further differentiates those with expertise beyond the broad technical capability that's often demonstrated by the competencies. If I say this in other words, I like to equate competencies or the soon to be solution designations as measuring your broad technical capability in an area like business applications or Azure, for example. If I think about advanced facts, I think of that in, more in terms of measuring your in-depth technical capability in a specific area like low code or SAP on Azure, for example. Um, when we look at the low code app dev advanced spec, this really is ensuring partners are meeting requirements spanning everything from competencies, certification. So we'll look at how many uh, individuals within your partner organization have met various power platform related certifications. We also look at the number of customer deployments that you're driving, but aligned to that, we want to not only see how many customer deployments you have, but we also want to look at what is the monthly active usage 
that you're driving at that customer. Because what that signals to us is not only that you have deployed a Power App or a Power Automate solution, but we're also seeing usage associated with those apps that you have deployed. And that signals, obviously, that there is growth that is happening and customers are getting benefit out of using uh, your solutions. And then lastly, we, of course, want to make sure that customers can find you. So we also look to make sure that your app or your service, your uh, consulting service offer is posted on our commercial marketplace, which is AppSource. All of these things combined really equip you, the partner, to be successful when providing load code uh, solutions to customers. But at the end of the day, as I mentioned earlier, it's also really about ensuring customer success as well. Thank you so much. Jeff, I think you had a couple questions, right? Yeah, so that's pretty great, Kelly. Um, and, I, and I should know this, and I, I, I kind of do, but I, I, I love the opportunity to be able to speak with you about this, right? So it's like, you know, can you tell us a little bit more about how partners can earn this? What are some best steps that they should do to be able to obtain these specializations? Yeah, absolutely. So I think I have, and thank you for the question, Jeff. Um, I think we have a few slides that are coming up that talk a little bit about the requirements associated with the low code application development advanced spec. Again, I did say that was a mouthful, right? Um, so and as I mentioned before, we really look at performance and requirements associated with three different areas. The first one being performance. For each one of these categories, there's a different set of uh, requirements that you, the partner, needs to meet. So right now, and again, just want to preference, this is specific to low code. All advanced uh, specializations have different sets of requirements. Um, so this one specific to low code. So the first one is our partners need to attain a gold competency in one of the following areas. So there's seven different competencies listed here today. So that's the very first step. As Katie mentioned, come October, these will move over to solution designations and we'll update the requirements that you'll find in Partner Center as well as um, on our public facing website to outline which specific solution designations will be needed for this particular requirement. If we go to the next slide. The next part of uh, the requirement is we want to see that you're meeting customer success. So what does this mean? We really look to see um, that you have at least a minimum of five customers. At each one of those customers, we want to see that you have deployed at least one power app into production. For us to count something as a production application, it not only has to be in a production environment, but we also have a minimum threshold of the number of users that we want to see associated with that app. So for this one, we're saying you need to have at least five users with 50 sessions per month. And then the way we actually see that um, and are able to track that internally is through a process that we call the uh, Partner Admin Link or PAL. I could go into some more information later on, on the call about PAL um, and also have a number of uh, super helpful resources that can help talk through that process and how you do that linkage. But in addition to seeing you have five customers, at each one of those customers, you at least have one application deployed to production. We also wanna see what I was talking about before. We wanna see an increase in the monthly active usage of at least 35% over a trailing 12 month period. So we're looking at again, not just the deployment itself, but we want to see that growth in the usage of these applications and that really signals to us customer success aligned with it. And then I'll come back to this one because this is often the one we get the most questions on. But if we go forward just one more slide, there's one more component to this. Lastly, um, we want to see um, validated capabilities. So the first, as I mentioned before, we want to make sure you're discoverable. Um, and by doing that, we want to see that your Power Apps Consulting Service Offer, or CSO, is published to our commercial marketplace, which is AppSource. Your CSOs could be everything from implementation offers, proof of concepts, uh, in-a-day workshops, briefings, etc. 
So there's numerous services that are available that you could uh, create an offer around and put into the marketplace. And then lastly, we want to see a, a certain number of individuals with your organization have the skills aligned to our platform. So we look for a certain number of individuals um, passing and getting certifications in the various power platform certs that are listed here. So everything from functional consultant to developer to solution architect as well. If you do all of these things and you meet those requirements, that's when you would earn that uh, low code app dev advanced specialization or soon to be just specialization. So let me pause there and maybe see if there's any questions or any of the areas on the requirements you would like me to revisit? Well, I can tell you one thing, you know, we can highlight a, a great partner of ours, Walter Sill from the Bowen Group, who just yes. got the low code. Yes, congratulations, uh, Walter. Yeah, yeah, and he's actually made some great, if you haven't been paying attention to the actual text, I've actually been looking up my left eye. He's made some really great comments uh, uh, in there. So, <laughs> So that's pretty cool. I think Jeff, you had another question too. I think you're gonna go to the next one, right? Yeah. Um, you know, obviously partners have their their tools of partner center being able to see how things are working um, with their current. Is is there ways for them to check on how they're doing with their PCI and like what you know, what are your recommendations on that? Yeah, so there's um, two things that I would like to call out. So um, the website, there is a public facing website um, that I'll put a link to in the window that details at a high level all of the different advanced specializations spanning our solution areas that are available today. If you go to that, there's a document that you can uh, download that will detail the specific requirements. But we always um, say the main source of truth to seeing not only the requirements, but how you're tracking towards meeting those requirements is within Partner Center. So if you're in Partner Center, and I believe for this one, you would go under membership, business applications, and then you would see the various advanced specs associated with business applications. Today, there are two, there's low code, and then there's also one for SMMC or small mid market. Um, and as Katie mentioned, there's additional ones that are on the roadmap that will be coming out as well. Thank you. Of course. And interestingly enough, there was a question in here. This is a little bit off, a little bit, a little bit off the road, but still, yep. this road, but this is not for Kelly. So don't worry about or, or Katie. Um, but there was a one about security, uh, advanced specialization, and that's a fantastic one. And what I will say, because we've already been advising this for some of our partners, we actually just had some, one of our partners get that advanced specialization as well. It, it's it takes a little while. You know, there's an investment to getting this done. Okay. Yeah, but you know, I think there's you can count on less than two, uh, on two hands the amount of security specialization partners. Think about that. Mm. Okay, so think about I, I would say then if you can take read between the lines here, what's the opportunity, right? So and if you already have a a pretty you know good practice, you know heck, why you know if you already have a really you know really you know deep security practice. Hey, put the extra effort in. You know, get those get those people signed up. You know, or get the certifications and put the extra you know extra effort in, especially if that's like your main business. Uh, and I talked to a VC recently, a venture capitalist. I have this lunch with this group uh, once a month, and they're talking about the multiples for MSSPs right now are like seven times revenue. Think about that. Just thinking. Okay. Anyways, I, digress. I, get, I, I get excited. I get these things that just blow to my head. I'm like, let's, let's talk about it. Okay. No, but Sherman, you're spot on. And if I even think about the partner opportunity, not specific to security, I'll keep going back to the topic I love most: low code. The, the, we talked about the numbers before. The what we're seeing in terms of the market trends. There's such a huge opportunity. We know this is the direction the market is going. We know that there's going to be continued customer demand for this. And we also know from a partner perspective, this is where the opportunity lies. So how do we work together to best equip and ensure that we could deliver uh, together on this customer success journey? Oh, that's fantastic. All right. Um, is there any other slides that you wanted to cover here? I apologize. I'm a little, I got a little um, uh, 
out of the order on my 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 uh, thing here. Is there anything else, Kelly, that you want to spend, or should we open up for Q and A? No, I think that's good. I just wanted to kind of reinforce again what the low code application development advanced spec is. Katie did a fantastic job of talking about some of the changes that will be coming in October to the broader program. Um, and then there are, of course, specific requirements associated with each one of these. Um, and if there are any questions on meeting the low code application development advanced spec requirements, I'm happy to take questions on that and or always um, happy to have you reach out to me directly and we could go through that. And I might just do one more plug <laughs> in addition to the advanced specs. I also host a weekly power platform. We call it Tech Talks. It's a partner call series, but it's an amazing series where we actually have Microsoft engineering members come and talk directly to our partners about the various um, product functionality that exists today and what's also coming out. So these are open to all partners. They happen on Thursdays at 8 a.m. Pacific. Great opportunity to hear directly from the folks that are making the products today at Microsoft and ask any questions that you may have. All of that knowledge, of course, is going to translate into helping you get your certifications and ultimately getting the advanced specialization as well. Fantastic. All right. Hey, guys, so we, we have a small uh, little announcement that we're going to be making today. Um, my team's probably like, oh my gosh, what is he about to say? <laughs> um, uh, you know, we run the Azure Immersion Workshops for the U.S. and Canada subsidiaries. These are four and a half hour, um, you know, four and a half hour level, 200, 300, 400, you know, type of labs. And in the past, there was no partner attached. Uh, but now starting in July, uh, we're actually running the program to create a community site, okay, where we're training up uh, partners who have advanced specializations. So if you have advanced specializations in Azure, in security and or power platform. Those are the three workshops that we're going to be running uh, and we're going to be running them in conjunction with partners. Please, um, you know, we'll, we'll send out uh, a, 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 a formal um, survey if you're interested in being part of that to be considered for that uh, to me pretty high bar. Uh, but the beauty of it is Microsoft sends the customers to it and they're typically, you know, uh, customers anywhere between 500 seats and you know, ten thousand seat type of customers are in the SMC and enterprise. So if that's just, if you're interested in that, uh, it's really good. Now, Jeffrey, you did mention you said to me earlier. There was a couple of questions that you actually had, right? That for uh, for Kelly, uh, do you want to go into one of those, maybe? Sure. I mean, yeah. There's a number of different things um, that's out there, and it's kind of amazing the pace of change. I love hearing about these dynamic tech talks, but one of the cool things I saw this week uh, with the Microsoft build was kind of some of the announcements. And I just want to get your take on it. If, you, if you've had a chance to take a look at the new Express design and Power right. Apps. Have you seen it? I have seen it and the ability to create an app directly from an image or a Figma file. It is, it's mind blowing, it's crazy. Like to me, it's just like OCR for like invoice payments and all that. Yep. It's like, wow, you, <laughs> you can now like on a chicken scratch in a in a in a meeting design a form, and this is just insanity. I'll be honest; it's kind of amazing to see. And you know, if any partners haven't seen the keynote yet, um, I, I think that'd be really kind of a cool thing to get in get into. So. You know, I don't know, that's more of a comment versus a statement. <laughs> I, I just think it's, it's amazing what Microsoft's doing on that side. And, and I'm not just trying to be a cheerleader. I, I was actually jaw-dropping at that moment. But one of the things that I think is really interesting is you talked about app in the day, dashboard in the day, those types of applications. You know, I, I was lucky enough to be able to attend one of those. I, I've turned myself into a citizen developer, and it, it, it's really cool. Um, you know, some partners that I spoke to, they get a little concerned. It's like, you know, that's my job, right? Like, teaching them how to get involved with this. And I'm, I'm wondering if you can help explain kind of the partner opportunity that's out there leveraging these trainings and, you know, the services that come behind it. Yeah, no, great question. And I, I think the, the thing that I want to stress is 
we definitely we recognize this we can't do this without our partners um, a lot of the programs that we have built internally at Microsoft, like the In a Day programs, these are all partner-led programs. When I look at the different enablement um, opportunities that we have, like the Tech Talk series, like partner roundtables, et cetera, those are all focused on how do we continue to enable our partners to best serve customers. I mentioned before, this is, you know, at the end of the day, what we're all looking at is how are we driving customer success? Um, so we're gonna continue to look for opportunities to do it that way. This isn't my specific area, but I'll also say there's a number of partner incentives um, and offers that are also built in to help partners. It's, you, it's, you're leaving money on the table if you're not taking advantage of these, but there's offers incentives that could be used from partners who are delivering activities or different, uh, providing different services to customers as well. So I would just say, if you're not familiar with those, get on the uh, Microsoft Partner Network website, understand all of that information. And then Jeff, I think the, the most important thing is there is no shortage of use cases or untapped kind of market potential. There, when I think about what can be done with Power Platform, specifically Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents, PBI, endless use cases that are on the table right now that partners could really build their practices around and take advantage of uh, that opportunity. So I would just say, keep looking for what those use cases are, those opportunities, understand the end benefits that can be derived from those, and then work with us um, from Microsoft perspective to help make sure that you're meeting um, all of the various requirements needed to start earning those designations as well. That's, that's a great answer. Uh, Katie, do you mind if I uh, bring you back in here? There was one of the, the top questions that we had, and I think you can answer this one very well, um, is are the, are the requirements for an advanced specialization changing? And, and then just, just a little bit more on that one, you, you've said that it's not going to be called advanced specialization. Maybe it's just specialization. Could you just touch a little bit on, on, on maybe naming convention change? Because that sometimes trips us all up, right? All of a sudden, Microsoft comes up with a new, you know, oh, wait, we changed it up a little naming. Can you just extrapolate on that for us a little bit? Happy to. Um, on the first part, uh, know the requirements for advanced specializations do not change as they become specializations, uh, with the exception that as competencies retire from market, um, we will instead require the relevant solution partner designation in its place. Um, otherwise, requirements are staying as you see them today. Um, and the rebranding is pretty simple. We're just streamlining it a little bit, removing the word advanced, changing it to specialization, um, and specialist partners. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, and I think there was one other one that I liked here. Um, when will partners receive the specialization badge and benefits? I know you said it already, but maybe just a, 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 another reinforcement might be really awesome. We're all about uh, iteration with these messages. So, um, yes, the badge will be available immediately on October 3rd for partners who currently have um, an advanced specialization and meet the requirements for solution partner on that date. Um, the benefits will be available uh, when you've taken a couple of steps. So you have to earn Solution Partner first. Uh, you need to reach your Solution Partner anniversary date, which today is the same as your competency anniversary date. And then you have to choose the Solution Partner benefits package to get the um, add-on specialization benefits package. The specialization benefits package is not available to partners who choose to stay with our legacy competency benefits package. So I would look at the two to, to determine which is best for your company. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So let's just change gears here. Um, we want to say thank you so much for, for everybody here. We do want to just talk about uh, a great program that we're running with Stratos Cloud Alliance. Uh, and and uh, it's the Mar Microsoft Immersion Marketing Program. We're going to play a quick video. If you're a member of Stratos Cloud Alliance, so you're working through Jeffrey, DeMaria, Scott May, anybody there, uh, you can take advantage of this program. Now, if you're not working through the Stratos Cloud Alliance and you, you want to buy licenses to 
another distributor. You can have choices. Please contact Jeffrey uh, or Scott May uh, to sign up for them. But we have a special program that we are actually using um, or generating leads for uh, their their partners. So let's go ahead and uh, push play really quickly. And we'll we would like to announce Stratos Cloud Alliance and the Kranz Group are now joining forces to drive top of the funnel sales leads for their partners. So Microsoft partners are searching for net new conversations and opportunities, but most partners struggle with the net new customer acquisition. But there's a solution to create a repeatable top of the funnel lead campaign. So the Crancer Group drives leads at scale with a tailored Microsoft customer immersion experience through a variety a power platform hands-on labs that highlights Stratos Cloud Alliance solutions and most importantly, partner expertise. The average session includes 15 to 20 registrants, eight to 12 attendees, and five to six customer intent submissions. Then Stratos Cloud Alliance partners will be provided a list of registrations, attendees, and most importantly, those who raise their hands. Stratus Cloud Alliance then provides a targeted nurture program for the leads generated. This program has a $3,000 per month value, but at a zero cost to qualified Stratus Cloud Alliance partners. Submit your application today to be included in the special program by contacting your Stratus Cloud Alliance PDM. We look forward to helping you transform into the partner of tomorrow. We would like to announce Stratos Cloud the Alliance. The partner of tomorrow. <laughs> we love to say that over here. Uh, but hey, you know, Jeff, we, we've been talking about this. Maybe just some thoughts on that program um, uh, from your, your perspective. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've had a, several of our partners start signing up for it, and we're, we're really looking forward to having uh, some success drive that. Um, you know, a big challenge that we have seen with our partners is we're, we're, we're small and we don't necessarily all have the marketing bandwidth capability, the sales bandwidth. So what the Crancer Group through this partnership working with our partners is helping them with that new lead generation activities, driving new conversations and engagements, which is really exciting because that's why I think a lot of partners need help with is with marketing. So. We leverage all these different resources and tools. We work with your group to help uh, target specific industries or what they're trying to focus on. And it, 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 so far, so good. We've actually trained up uh, Kevin Hahn on our team to help work through that process to make sure it's as smooth as possible. That's one of our primary goals here at Stratus Cause to make it to be the easy to do business with partner and you know, working with you guys, you're just making it easier for our partners to grow. Great. Thank you very much. Well, that's the only plug of the day. I want to say thank you so much. Hey, next month is going to be amazing. We actually have, um, uh, we have a gentleman from Microsoft in the security. Uh, Jonathan Davis uh, is an amazing speaker. I saw him in Orlando and one of the best presentations I've seen in 10 years. I couldn't believe it. I was sitting there with my draw drop. He's going to talk about the evolution of Microsoft security. Uh, it's going to be really great. There's a, 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 a link there. We'll send it out to everybody. Uh, for the speakers, for Katie, for Kelly, uh, for, for Jeffrey, thank you so very much. Um, like, sincerely, thank you. Thank you for bringing this great information, you know, to the partner base here. Uh, we sincerely appreciate it. Sincerely. Look at all those, those <laughs> claps. That is awesome. Look at all Look at That is awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Pleasure speaking with you. Take care. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, we're gonna let you guys go. Now we do stick around for some networking after. I'll stick around, but you know, we wanna give everybody back the time of the day that they need. So go ahead and take off. Uh, but we'll go ahead and send you, you know, the copy of all this information. And I mean you can always contact us here at the Grants Group on YouTube, on LinkedIn, www.grantsgroup.us. Uh, and it's only us because some Yahoo's got dot com uh, you know, the holding hostage for way too much money. But maybe maybe we'll get that one of these days. Anyways. Thanks, everybody, and have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.